Aloha. I'm Representative Cynthia Thielen. I represent the windward side of Oahu, and today I'm delighted to have Marty Townsend with me, and Marty is the director of the Sierra Club. Marty, welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Representative Thielen. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, maybe you can tell our viewers, um, what is the Sierra Club? What does it do? But first, I should do a disclosure. Mm. I'm a member. Oh, well, thank you very much for your membership. So the Sierra Club is a membership organization. We're um, led by volunteers uh, throughout the state of Hawaii. And uh, we host um, outdoor educational programs, hikes usually. And we also help to advocate on behalf of the protection of our environment. And so uh, most recently, uh, and the subject of today's discussion, we've been um, focused a lot on clean energy and ensuring that um, Hawaii has a 100% renewable clean energy future. That's wonderful. That's Thank wonderful. You. Right in touch with what we are doing at the Capitol, too, yes. which is that 100% renewable energy future. Yeah. And not so much in the future, actually. We're talking in a number of decades that we should be able to get there. Yeah. We, we share something in common. Yes. We both graduated from what now is the William S. Richardson School of Law, but when I graduated, it was down in the quarry, <laughs> and it was called the University of Hawaii School of Law. Yes. Um, uh, Oh, how it's uh, come about and evolved. I'm very proud of the Richardson School of Law. Um, I actually got to graduate from the environmental law program that uh, Casey Jarman and uh, Denise Antolini started. So. We, when, <coughs> when I was in school there, we had environmental law, but we didn't even have case books. Wow. Boyce, Brown, Boyce Brown, a marvelous, marvelous attorney from yeah. Hawaii, was our professor. And he uh, also was a practicing attorney, of course, in downtown Honolulu. But he, we just had cases that we would study oh. and then work on the concepts because the law was evolving back in yeah. that period of time. So new. Yes, and thank you so much for all of the trailblazing that you all did uh, those years back because now we have some of the best environmental laws um, around because we do. of that. We do. Thank you very much. And it's excellent. Yeah. Well, let's go back on to the renewable energy. Um, one of the things that I've been promoting for years is wave energy technology, mm -hmm. and which means that the uh, devices sit in the ocean. Some are completely submerged, so they aren't even visible. Mm -hmm. And then the devices catch the energy, the movement, the surge of the ocean, and transmit the energy to the shore where it's converted into power that can go right onto the grid. Mm. So we now have um, one wave energy converter off of Marine Corps Base, Hawaii, in mm. Kaneohe Bay. Another is about to be deployed. I think it's going to be towed out there within the next week or two. Oh. And then there's a third berth where they're going to be trying another device. The wave energy, energy technology, the WECs, are much more advanced in Europe um, in Ireland, um, Scotland, England. In fact, there's one l small island in Scotland that's totally powered by wave energy. And wow. <clears throat> the, um, the idea for Hawaii would be that it's much less visible. Mm -hmm. It can be in a relatively small area where it's a um, environmentally secure area for the wave energy technology. And the power that it provides to the grid sometimes can be as um, inexpensive as single-digit cost, wow. under 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Wow. So that's something that when we look at Hawaii being 100% renewable, I feel that wave energy is coming along right at the right time, and it's going to be a player in that whole field. Yeah, I mean, Hawaii has such an abundance of uh, natural, renewable uh, sources of energy. It makes uh, perfect sense for us to be exploring all of those options. And Absolutely. Well, then that brings us to the subject now, which is what should we be doing? Should we have a Hawaiian electric that is able to sell, be, be pardon me, to be able to be bought by next era, mm -hmm. or should the Public Utilities Commission look at NextEra and realize that it's a utility that has a 
completely different mode from what we want to have in Hawaii. And so should we as legislators, as a state, be looking at maybe municipally held utilities, um, community held utilities, following the um, island of Kauai concept and mm -hmm. doing what they're doing, which is like a co-op, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> all of the members that use power on that island are members of the co-op. Right. So what what is the model that's going to work for Hawaii? And maybe you could weigh in and explain a little bit about what Sierra Club is doing. Well, so the Sierra Club has intervened on the uh, Public Utility Commission's decision-making process. Um, and that's the decision-making process about whether or not next era should be allowed to buy Hawaiian right. Electric. Right, because Hawaiian Electric is a, is a monopoly, a publicly um, regulated monopoly. In order for Nextera to purchase it, um, the Public Utility Commission has to authorize, has to agree. And, and so then just so people know, um, for those that don't know, Nextera is based in Florida. It's right. It's not it's here. It's, it's, a, it's a very large Florida-based company. Um, and they are seeking to purchase HECO as one of their many 900 some odd companies that they own uh, to produce energy. And, uh, and that's actually part of our concern is that uh, having a uh, company from f as far away as Florida own our utility and our electricity um, means that we have even less control as a people over this very important natural resource. And, this and then is actually they're allowed to be a monopoly. So yeah. it's not like they're competing entities. Uh, right. It's not like you have a Burger King, a McDonald's, um, right. choices. Taco Bell, whatever. Right. Right. And You've the choices, you have a single yeah. monopoly right. that controls and owns the whole show. Right, and, and actually um, Nextera in Florida um, has actually worked hard to ensure that competition for energy production um, is kept down. And so we could see, uh, we can only anticipate that there'd be similar approaches to Hawaii. In Hawaii, uh, because of so much uh, public pressure to get to a clean energy future, um, you actually have quite a few options in terms of third-party production of natural energy. And so um, we want to see that expanded, not reduced. And uh, we think, the Sierra Club thinks, that uh, if we step back and look at all of the options that are available, publicly owned utility, a different company, a different model, we will see that this offer from Nextera is not in the public's best interest. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, I'm, I personally am uh, very much in support of a publicly owned utility, because I, I feel that that takes away, having it be publicly owned takes away the um, profit motive that a regular corporation would mm -hmm. need to satisfy in order to have a business. Um, this is just one of those situations where the regular um, profit motives don't uh, serve the public's interest. Um, and instead, you want to have something where, uh, like on Kauai and in hundreds of other s um, municipalities and states that have uh, publicly owned utilities, uh, the interest of the customer and the interests of the company are exactly the same. Yes. And, and <laughs> well, uh, last session, um, this year, but last session, I introduced um, House Bill 3. Mm -hmm. And what House Bill 3 was um, designed to do was to allow and fund the University of Hawaii to look at different models for us, not just sticking with the Hawaiian electric monopoly, but look mm -hmm. at the idea of public ownership. Right. And so the bill, the bill was introduced, um, co-sponsored by Representative McKelvey, who is the oh. head of Consumer Protection and Commerce Committee. And a Maui. But, <laughs> I know, and a Maui rep, yeah. and Maui's being very active on this, looking at possibly um, establishing their Maui County ownership of right. uh, <coughs> the utility. So anyway, the bill didn't move, but it's alive for two years, so okay. it's alive this year. And then all of a sudden, we now have a rather large group of about 50 elected officials that are saying, wait a minute, we want to look at other forms of ownership for our utility. Mm -hmm. And we want to look at municipal as well as co-ops. And so that was very exciting to me when that everyone joined together and made that announcement. The vehicles in 
the legislature to be able to go to get the professional examination from mm -hmm. University of Hawaii to say how could that work, which is the best model, or possibly right within the House, our Legislative Reference Bureau will look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk about perfect timing. I think it the, is. All of the tension that this um, uh, takeover proposal has brought us has really, I think, opened our eyes to the fact that there are other options out there. Well, the thing that's amazing, I heard a figure as high as 80% of the public does not want next year to come. and. Yeah. Be the next. I think people are concerned about local control. People are concerned about rates. They're concerned about clean, clean energy. I mean, the fact that so much of Nextera's um, energy portfolio comes from things like um, fossilized gas, you know, mm -hmm. fracked gas, um, as well as nuclear energy. And these are things that Hawaii just hasn't does not want to really embrace for its electricity resources. We really want to look at our diversified renewable energy sources, our local energy. Sure. So and, I, and I read somewhere that they have only like 5,000 um, customers with f solar or photovoltaic. I'm not sure which it is. Yeah, it's a very low percentage. And uh, that's, just, uh, that's just amazing to me in Florida, the sunshine yeah. state. I know. They're th they're, Florida is ranked third for um, its potential for solar, but is ranked near the bottom in terms of um, adoption of solar. And Nextera says that that's because of electricity rates, saying that, well, because rates are so low in Florida for uh, fossil fuel-based electricity, there's no incentive to move to solar. But, you know, when we did our research, we found that there were at least 12 other states that had lower electricity rates than Florida, but had higher solar panel adoption, so solar use. Because the climate would have been more supportive yeah, for so people to go ahead and do that. Right, incentive programs, mm -hmm. um, leasing programs, um, allowing, uh, encouraging third-party energy producers like solar companies. Um, all of these kinds of factors weigh into whether a uh, area to adopt solar energy or not and the reality is is that next era has worked against solar power I mean mm -hmm. at this point Floridians are having to take it to a constitutional amendment to allow for uh, solar companies to produce energy because next has been working against that that is amazing it's amazing well now how on earth would that kind of a <laughs> monolithic monopoly be the one that we should have for Hawaii. Right. It just it doesn't seem to comport and even you know, even workers recognize that this is not in their interest. Um, the union representing Kiko employees, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, uh, you know, at first was um, conditionally supportive. They could see maybe if there were some modifications to the proposal, maybe they could endorse it. But Nextera wasn't willing to embrace any of their suggestions. And so uh, with their you know follow-up filing, um, the IBEW recognized that it wasn't in their workers' interest to support right. this takeover. Right. And so um, I think you know if you have the environmental community coming out and saying, hey, this is not a good idea, and you have labor unions coming out saying it's not a good idea, it really is reason for pause. <laughs> well, it, it's amazing, too. As, as I understand it, I think virtually all of the interveners are very, very concerned mm -hmm. and many of them just directly opposed to this whole idea. Right. Yes. And that I, I do credit Public Utilities Commission for voluntarily going around to the neighbor islands and Oahu and holding public listening hearings. Yeah, so they just had one on Maui, which was very well attended. Oh, that's and, good. And, and the majority of people um, who testified did raise concerns about um, the utility, this takeover proposal. Um, and we're going to have hearings all throughout uh, the state, uh, all the major islands. And on Oahu, the next the hearing will be held October 27th. And that's at McKinley, at McKinley High School. Yeah, at 6 okay. p.m. And Let, let's say that again so okay. listeners will know. So uh, October 27th, uh, 6 p.m. at McKinley High School is the uh, PUC's uh, public listening session on the next era merger deal. And that information, as well as all of the other hearing dates, um, are available on the Sierra Club website, which is sierraclubhawaii.org. Okay, Sierra Club Hawaii, all one word, right. dot org, yeah. and go on and get the PUC date, and people on the island of Oahu, I would hope, would turn out in large numbers. And then, as I understand it, you have maybe three to five minutes to testify? Yeah, I think um, they'll announce at the beginning of the hearing or the, okay. of the listening session what their protocols are, but um, the, the main thing is that this is really the opportunity for the public to come out and have their voice heard. A lot of people have 
have been submitting letters to the editor um, and have been you know voicing their opinions on social media and this is the time to really have your voice heard uh, by the decision maker the Public Utilities Commission itself and those three commissioners will be there that's ex yes. incredibly important yes. for them to hear from the public yeah very important so this is your chance to go out there and, and make know. your voice heard <laughs> so I'm hoping people will. So uh, the intervener process, where mm -hmm. are you in that now? So the, um, we've submitted all of our filings, and next era had an opportunity to review all of our positions and our suggestions and our concerns, and uh, filed a rebuttal, and that was their opportunity to address our concerns. And that was filed last week, well, you know, recently. And uh, unfortunately, I think the uh, the overwhelming uh, assessment is that they didn't um, address a lot of the concerns mm -hmm. that the interveners had raised. And so um, uh, now they'll start the formal process. So first they'll have the public listening sessions, and then there will be um, actual hearings in November and December where um, evidence will be accepted and um, witnesses will be um, uh, questioned and interviewed and I'm sure the news will be covering those closely and then uh, the Public Utilities Commission has said that they are hoping to make a decision by June of 2016 and uh, so we can anticipate that it will be somewhere around then that we can at least have some decision and at <coughs> the same time my hope is that we will have people looking at the alternative ways of um, right. structuring the utility it's very hard to please two masters mm. and that's the difficulty when you allow a company to be a monopoly which we have the legislature has allowed that mm -hmm. and that's been for over a century mm -hmm. but the monopoly utility um, is responsible to make a profit for its shareholders and then on the other hand it's supposed to serve the consumer yeah and many times those two can be in conflict they don't work together sometimes yeah I, it, rec it puts a lot of pressure on the the utilities reg commission yes. the, the regulatory body to ensure that the public's interest is met and I think you know the public's um, frustration with HECO is an indication of that tension between the yes. shareholder interest and the ratepayers interest and uh, and so I, I am excited about the opportunity to have uh, a publicly owned utility be it a municipally owned utility or co-op um, because there's an opportunity there for us to line all of our interests up and work together. I mean, it's true that having a publicly owned utility doesn't guarantee a clean energy future, but it does make it a, a lot more possible. Well, so. and when, when the majority of the people in Hawaii, again, want that future, mm -hmm. then you aren't fighting um, sort of an uphill battle. Right. You're right there. You're all together. You all have the same vision. Right. And then the question is exactly how does that play out? How do you get to that clean energy future, the 100%. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where I go back to the wave energy converters that won't be the entire answer, but it will be a, a major player, I would say maybe a 25% segment of the clean energy. Um, yeah. And we, and we want to ensure that uh, we have the, t you know, the kind of smart grid that we need, investment in the grid yes. itself that allows for a lot of small scale production. I think people are concerned about um, renewable energy uh, running foul of the same problems that we see with, uh, you know, fossil fuel based energy where you have um, large projects that you know maybe undermine the the aesthetic beauty of an area or you know conflict with agricultural uses of land and so um, there might be need for some large-scale energy production but the point is for us to first look at the small scale what each homeowner can yes. do and how can we support them in being successful and and that I think with that we'll get to an energy independent Hawaii and that's, that's where exciting. there was such frustration I know a, lot, a number of constituents and others from uh, throughout the island mm -hmm. have have gotten a hold of me and said we've waited for over a year to put in our photovoltaic mm. when <coughs> some of them had actually paid down the substantial amount for the device and mm. then they were told by Hawaiian Electric you're in the queue you're yeah. back in the line and so you it. just have to wait and so they were paying the high utility bills and paying the loan on mm. their P photovoltaic mm. system and it was like <coughs> we can't get moved through the process so I would get a hold of a particular person at Hawaiian Electric who has been so supportive and mm. so helpful in making sure that the utility actually responded and did help people get through mm. and so uh, for I the most part people have 
have been the ones that have contacted me for the most part, they've been able to hook up. And I think it's an important thing to highlight that there are quite a few people within HECO itself that recognize the potential for yes. a, a <laughs> clean energy future for Hawaii. And I think it's important for us to try to pull those voices up and highlight them. And, uh, and I think once again, if we had a publicly owned utility, uh, those kinds of people and with their expertise would be able to advocate on behalf of the public. Absolutely. And, yeah. and they're there and they're experienced yeah. and they, they're with us in what we want to accomplish. Yeah, and then on top of all of that, you would have a situation where you're more, where rate payers are more likely to get rebates than um, have those profits taken home by shareholders. So like we've seen on Kauai. Well now explain that again to the viewers. What has well, happened? So uh, when you have a, a privately owned monopoly and you have shareholders who are invested in the company, uh, whatever profits that, a, that company uh, earns, uh, get sent to the shareholders as a payment mm -hmm. for their investment. And Kiko, for example, took home $35 million last quarter. Um, what's interesting is that when you look at Kauai's co-op utility, um, they actually rebated $2 million last quarter to their ratepayers. And so there is a contrast there where you can okay. see that the money that would be going to shareholders um, in a private model would be going back to ratepayers in the form of a rebate when you right. have a publicly owned model. Right, so, right. Yeah, it's definitely in our interest, I think, to, to really fully examine this before we just take the first offer that we're given. Well, I found that it was interesting that um, the head of the uh, city council, Ernie Martin, mm -hmm. was here as part of the group that said, we want to look at different models. Mm -hmm. And I believe his focus was maybe more on a municipally operated model, yeah. um, and which is great. I mean, let's put everything on the table. Let's see. What, what would make more sense for us? Right, and it's tr it's possible that you know different islands, different counties might have different models that exactly. make them better a co-op or a municipality right. depending on our size and our needs. So, yep, and I think um, it's you know I'm very excited by what we're seeing in Maui uh, with that with the municipality there, and uh, yeah, the fact that we have some of the heavy hitters, as you would say, in the lo local uh, Honolulu politics uh, in hanging their support. I think uh, it's a it's a bright future for Hawaii's energy. Well, and then the Big Island. Um, is it Paniolo Power? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. The Big Island, the Parker Ranch, right. where they brought in uh, very experienced technical people to advise them to say, uh, number one, if you could use the Big Island electric lines, the power lines, mm -hmm. um, here is what would happen if you develop your renewable energy program. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can't and have to put in your own lines, you still will save money for the rate payers, oh. even if that happens. Wow. And so they've been moving ahead, um, examining that. That's Hydro good. is one of the things, because Parker Ranch has, of course, the elevation, the property that's mm -hmm. elevated enough to, to be able to make that work. Yeah. I don't know if they've looked at wave energy, but it <laughs> makes me <laughs> I think I need to get a hold of them and say, let's put that in the, yeah. the mix. Yeah, I mean, even <laughs> when you look at it in terms of, uh, you know, the public buying, the, you know, the state or the county um, condemning the utility and buying those resources from the private right. company um, and running that company locally, that money stays in Hawaii. So either it's taxpayers well, or Well, now that's payers. incredibly important. Do yeah. that one again for the <laughs> viewers. <laughs> so, the, so when we invest in a publicly owned utility, we're investing in ourselves and that money stays in Hawaii. Uh, when we look at the Nextera model, a Florida-based company coming in and purchasing our utility, and that m the money that we would be giving to the utility for the electricity would be going to shareholders outside of Hawaii. That money would be leaving Hawaii. And so uh, when what we really need now is more investment in our infrastructure and in our resources mm -hmm. um, and not less. And I just, uh, we think that having a publicly owned utility would probably uh, suit our s needs better than the uh, f Florida-based company. Well, the, the thing that's so good is that it keeps the money in our economy and it keeps the jobs in our economy. That's right. That's something that just is very um, scary, frankly. Yeah. Their <coughs> next era says, okay, we'll not fire anyone for two years after we buy the utility, mm -hmm. and after that, there's no job security, and there's not, none of that. And you know, when you actually like uh, break down that promise that they made, um, it's they're 
kind of wiggly because it still allows them to take early retirements and to uh, oh. relocate jobs to Florida. Mm -hmm. And so there could still be a net loss of, uh, you know, representative labor mm -hmm. um, if this deal goes through, even mm -hmm. in, even with that two-year protection. But you're right. After that, it's there's yeah. nothing to say that you're going to no. have locally employed yeah, labor. And the thing is, is that especially for IBEW, you know, we sat down with them and, and they're ready. They're ready to embrace a clean energy future. They want to learn the new skills and they want to uh, really help Hawaii to be a leader, not only for the U.S., but for the world in terms of being truly sustainable. That means education for the members and then also jobs. Yeah. And that that's yeah. so important. And the solar industry is growing right now. We should in, be embracing that. And yes. That, and yeah. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward um, I, on the uh, Parker Ranch on the Big Island. I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing what they do and how they can move forward because I think they want to just actually uh, establish their own utility at that end of the island. And it makes a great deal of sense because, number one, they can do it in a more cost-effective manner. Mm -hmm. Number two, it's clean energy. Mm -hmm. And number three, as you say, the money stays here stays there, in Hawaii, yeah. even yeah. if they have to build new power poles, which is amazing to me. Yeah, That's amazing that they can still bring it in at less cost for their rate payers. Yeah. I think having a publicly owned utility also helps um, with that kind of innovation, right? Because you um, don't have to pay out to shareholders first, you have a certain amount of flexibility to um, innovate and to see what options you have for addressing the public's uh, sure. needs and interests. Sure. And so, yeah, we can invest in smart grids and in net metering and in all of the um, different, you know, tricks and whistles that will help us to get to a place where we um, have a clean energy future. It's exciting. Well, this has been fascinating. The time has flown and <laughs> I would love to do more of this um, because things are moving. It's a very important time for Hawaii yeah. and a huge important time. Uh, when you talk about a monopoly utility for over a century, now we have the opportunity to look at it and say, shouldn't we have locally developed locally owned, locally powered renewable energy yeah. for our Hawaii. Yeah, and Marty, I, I just want to thank you so much for being here. I look forward to doing it again. Thank you very much. Representative <laughs> Cynthia Thielen, representing the windward side of Oahu, and talking with Marty Townsend, director of Sierra Club. Marty, thank you. Thank you, Representative.